portrait sketches with just my red pens. I'm using this brand called the Flex Stick Pen, but for sketches like these, I'm really not too picky with what brand I'm using. I have found that most inexpensive ball pens will react about the same way, but I do think it's important that you use at least a red pen just because it's not as dark as the blue or the black ones. And that just means that they'd be easier to build up, and that's what we want. This video is only going to be focused on the shading. If you want to go more into how I draw from reference photos or how I build up the structures of the head, I have actually a couple of videos dedicated to that, and I will be linking those in the description. So when I do sketches like these, I actually like to do the initial sketch with my, the same pen first. Just because I really like seeing the construction lines show up a little throughout the end. You can also do this initial stage with your pencils. Just make sure you're not putting too much pressure onto your paper and not scouring the paper because those little indentions will, I think they will disrupt the flow of the red ballpoint pens and you don't want that. You just want these to glide onto the paper. Also, if you're still starting out, Make sure you're doing a small sketch like this one, just because when it's small like this, the range of motion with your wrist isn't as hard to get used to. You'd be able to control your lines better than if you say you were doing this on a much bigger scale. So now we're moving on to actually shading. The great thing about these pens is that when you draw from a side angle towards the paper, you will get much lighter lines than if your pen was going straight down onto the paper. And you really want to start with those light strokes first and the closer you are to having your pen be perpendicular to the paper the darker your lines are gonna look and the way i do this is that i go from light to dark so i really just make sure the pen is going at a sideways angle from the paper and another important thing is that i keep the strokes going one direction and when I'm doing this, I only like to leave out the brightest of the highlights because I really want this, want the sketch to look very saturated in the end. And that's also why I'm starting off with the lighter areas first. Because if I had gone and shaded in the darker areas, I risk underworking the lighter areas and I don't want that. I really want to make this look nice and well shaded. So for the next angle, I'm using the same amount of pressure on the paper with the same angle that the pen is pointing towards the paper, but this time it's going the opposite direction. You might also want to test out your pens on a separate sheet of paper regularly because you'll get these blobs and it's not the case for all pens, but I personally kind of like how they look and so I just leave them there, but for most of the time when you want everything to be consistent and predictable you might just want to keep that in mind so you can also go from light to dark with the same amount of pressure and the same direction that your pen is going by changing the distances between the lines so if you look at her eyes they're much darker than the rest of her face and i'm still using the same pressure on the pen except this time the, except in those areas i have the lines much closer together and therefore it looks much darker and this is really one thing that you want to practice if you're planning on doing this often is starting your lines off going very close together and then ending them much farther apart just because this creates this really nice gradient for them and so when you're starting off from the edges of the features of the face it will look like they're naturally shaded in and that's how you want them to look. It creates this really nice effect for portraits. And another big thing is that you should be shading by separate areas so that your lines will end on groups where they should be about the same value. So when you're shading the lips, you don't want to go over them because those lines are going to be darker where they end. Just because of the way your strokes are and the way your wrist is moving, those lines towards the ends are going to be closer together and therefore it's much darker. So for this third layer, it's the same rules, same pressure on the pen, but this time going another different direction. This time we're going straight down. 
So just like the first two layers, I'm only shading on the parts that are darker than the last layer. I'm not just going over the same areas as before. It's really important to make them about the same amount of pressure with your pens. Just because at this point, we're only building up the values. We're not really focusing on the details just yet. So for this one, I'm pointing the pen straight down and you can see that just a simple adjustment in the angle of the pen really made a lot of difference. And we're already filling out the outlines of her features and also her hair. So this is why we see why it's very important that those layers were following a very uniform pattern in their directions. Because now that we were using more organic, natural looking lines, these ones will just stand out on their own. And I was able to achieve different values with just one pen. So when you think about it, the concept for this is really like painting with watercolors. I'm just building up the values by layers and really just making them darker than the ones before. So because we didn't overdo the pressure on the pen towards the paper for those initial layers, we can really layer all these pen strokes a lot more than we think. I think for this one, I've built it up to a value that I'm content with. So now I'm just using my black GTEC pen to go over some of the details. Basically, the, this pen is the opposite of the red pen and not just because the ink is much darker, but also because it's, it makes very consistent lines no matter what angle you're drawing it with. So I love pairing these two together because I think they contrast and complement each other very well. So I'm using this one to go over the absolute darkest of the details. And now because I've just built up those layers and I did the sketch with also with the pen, it's easier for me to point out exactly where my dark pen is supposed to go and if I did make any mistakes with my initial sketch it would be mostly buried with those layers I put in and now it's easier for me to correct them with my black pen. did go over it with the red pens again just because now that those red pen strokes are next to the very dark black ink they kind of look underwhelming to me so I just want to really push those values a little bit more and that's why I'm going over them and just so I know that that this part will show up I'm putting a little more pressure on the pen on this stage too just so I know that when I put them there they're actually visible next to those already saturated layers When I'm inking, I like clumping chunks of black together for the shadows rather than just connecting all the lines together. So I'll have all these pockets of ink. For example, for her folds of her clothes, I'd have all those pockets of ink there where the folds meet and also for the darker parts of her hair. This is just the way I ink because I like the way it looks, but you guys can play around with this. 
a little bit more and see how you want to ink them it's really up to personal taste i think so i really love how this ink feels I, I just think it feels great on top of the red pen because this one is grips onto the paper better i don't know how else to explain it it just feels like it's sinking into the paper too through all of those red layers and i don't know I, that's just how it feels like to me and i really like it I think a good effect too is also if you want to use brush pens you can go over all these red inks with that too but I chose to use the GTAC pen because these are more readily available you can probably find this at your office supply stores so yeah these are just great and also not very hard to find which is awesome so that is it for how I do my red and black portrait drawings it honestly looks very simple, but there's a lot of thought that goes into me making them. For this next one, I'm gonna show you how you can also sketch with two colors instead of just one. I'm gonna use this Faber-Castell blue pen and it kind of just performs the same way as the red ones do. So these first few layers, I'm using the same techniques as the last time with the same directions for every layer and the same amount of pressure I'm putting on the pen. One thing that's important when you're using two colors is to always start with the lighter color of the two. Just because the darker colors will show up better when they're on top of the lighter colors instead of vice versa. For this one, I did go over it with the black pens very early on and that's because I messed up majorly on the initial sketch and I needed to correct that very early on because as I was building up my layers, the mistakes became more apparent and I wasn't aware of them before but now I am and I'm just using my GTEC pen to map out the features more correctly. So now I'm, after a couple of layers in, I'm starting with the blue. The angle of the pen is this exact same way as I did with, with the red and I can get away with this because it's a different color and I'm not too concerned about varying directions and pressures with the pen because well they're very different colors and so they will show up no matter what. I really love the combination of the blue and the red together and it has this purple looking effect and that's because even though I'm not really mixing the colors together, the way I'm doing my strokes is that you can still see a lot of the spaces between the lines and so even though the colors are just next to each other and on top of each other, it, it ends up looking like it's also getting mixed. So when you're building up the layers with two colors like this, there's a lot more wiggle room for shading. So I'm honestly just putting the layers on top of each other. The only thing I'm keeping in mind is to not have the pen be pushing straight down onto the paper. And another thing you can do is to switch up which colors are more dominant in one area. So for this one, I have made her shirt look more blue than red, while I'm doing the opposite for her face and her hands. And the way I do that is only having the other color be for the shadows, while the dominant one is what I'm using to fill most of this area with. So now I'm using more black to start filling out the details. And because there's more colors to compete with, it's much harder for the black to stand out. So I keep going back and forth between the three colors just so I can just build up the values more. But when I was doing the first one, I thought the black was too broad and too strong next to the red. But on this second one, because there's also a darker color, which is blue, the dark lines don't actually look too harsh. And it's even harder to get that contrasty effect that I want. So that's why I keep going over it more than I did the first one. I, but I think if you're a beginner, I actually recommend doing this first with the two colors. Because I think it doesn't require as much practice to do 
because there's not a lot of pressure control needed you just you really use the same light pressure the whole way through but it does require more work and therefore that means more practice so i really hope this helped you guys at all with your shading on your sketches i hope i explained myself well and that will be it for this video thank you guys for watching and i'll see you again soon